welcome everyone to another episode of Pastor Mike's Quick Shots. Now, I have to be honest with you, and I have to tell the truth. Today is Tuesday. I'm recording this a day early. I do not know any results. I haven't even been looking at them today. I voted early. Uh, I am not worried about it one way or the other. Doesn't bother me. I have. Uh, I was listening to a podcast this morning, and uh, somebody I admire, Kevin Watson, used this term, and I'm going to start to use this term because I think it's perfect. He said, in this corona tide that we are currently in, and I just found it to be humorous. But today I want to talk to you. I want to pick up off of, of this, knowing and noting that we're in this corona tide. I want to pick up on this. I want to tell you about being thankful. What gratitude does to us is it absolutely changes our outlook on things. I find it, I find it absolutely perfect that November is a time for us to get into this gratitude, get into this Thanksgiving, get into feeling thankful. There's so many places in scripture where we are called to be thankful. And I think that it's appropriate. It's perfect. It's how we grow. It's how we move. I take a look at uh, Psalm 92. Psalm 92 today, verses one through three, reads this way. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by a ten-stringed instrument, a harp, and the melody of a lyre. Now, this is incredible to me because this is what it is to bring this gratitude, this thanksgiving to God. It's, it's about doing it all day long. It's about doing it in the morning. It's about doing it in the evening. It's about being in this attitude of gratitude, even when we don't want to be. We are, are far too willing as beings to let the world tell us and dictate to us how we should and shouldn't feel. We do it all the time. All right. I talked about it on Sunday a little bit. We, we, we got, I get a flat tire. Oh, what a day. Who cares? Get the flat tire fixed. Move on with your day. Four hours after having the tire fixed, do you, or do you, are you still involved in this, this negativity? If you are, that's because you're still dwelling on it. You're still in it. And it's hard in that moment to say, oh, well, great. Thanks for the flat tire. But that's where our hearts should be. Not thankful that we have it, but thankful that we can get through it. Uh, I, in, our, in my newsletter, I used a quote on, on what gratitude does uh, from Melody Beetle. And I, and I want to share this with you because some of you may not get the newsletter. Uh, some of you may. But uh, I want to share this quote, and I'm going to share it again, uh, I think, coming up this Sunday. But what gratitude does, and this is what Melody Beetle says, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, and a stranger into a friend. I believe that the early disciples, the first century church, absolutely hung on that type of gratitude. They had to. They didn't have anything. They were being hunted. They were being murdered. They were being imprisoned. They had to have each other. They had to have an idea of gratitude. But what was their gratitude in? It wasn't in the things and the stuff because that's fleeting and it's passing. They had gratitude in a Savior who saved them and gave them life, eternal. Going to last long when this stuff is gone. That is your eternity. That's the basis and center of our gratitude. That's what gives us joy. That's what helps us get up in the morning. I want you to look at the words from Paul in his letter to the Romans. And he starts this in the very early stages of this letter. In Romans 1, 21 through 23. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. 
I don't know about you, but I am ready for election season to be over because I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter who sits in the White House. You heard me say this on Sunday. It doesn't matter who sits in the White House. My God is still on a throne. There is an end to this world that is coming. It may not be right now. It may not be next week, but it will not matter to God who is sitting as our president. He does not need our consensus in order to bring the second coming. He does not need our approval or our election in order to make that happen. It is happening and it will happen. What we need more than ever right now is gratitude. We need to understand that I have what I have and this is enough. This is great. How can I share what I have with somebody else? Because they may not have what I have. I had to make sure that, that when I was doing this today, that this cross is behind me because that cross is an absolute symbol of Jesus's return. It's where he died. It's where he gave everything for us that we would not squander it by worrying about what is happening to our economy or to our president or to our country, but that we would worry about where we are spending eternity. Friends, I pray that you understand today that it did not matter and still does not matter who wins the election. What matters is whose are you? Who do you belong to? God is forever and everything around you is temporary. I pray that you will join us. We're going to dig into this a lot deeper on Sunday morning. So I pray that you'll be able to join us uh, 9 a.m. at Maplewood, 1030 and to graph. I hope that you're getting ready to look because we're gonna we're gonna kick off Ignite Youth Ministries, our online platform uh, for our young people. That's coming up uh, right around the start of the Advent season. So I hope you're looking for that. Uh, just super excited about what we're doing. And I want to pray with you the prayer. Normally I post the prayer and I let you I let you do whatever you want with it. But I want to post it and I want to read it with you, and then I'll say goodbye. But I hope that you hang on to this prayer all throughout November, all the way through Thanksgiving, because this is going to get us through. No matter what's happening, this can get us through. Friends, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, for all that you've given. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you to Debbie McDaniel from a Crosswalk.com contributor for that wonderful prayer. And friends, I pray that you will have a great week, no matter what's happening around you and the world around you. Be grateful and be thankful. We'll see you. Bye, friends.